Welcome to Sharp Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Ford. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here for a poem review, a poem review that will make Mark from Words, Words Everywhere very happy. Dalton, what are we hitting today? Little Bukowski. Charles Bukowski, the Mockingbird. Yeah. I like Bukowski. We both like Bukowski. Love Bukowski. And hey, this, this isn't bad. So we're going to start with two readings. Okay. Dalton, would you like to go first? Why not? <clears throat> The Mockingbird had been following the cat all summer, mocking, 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 teasing and cocksure. The cat crawled under the rockers on porches, tail flashing, and said something very angry to the Mockingbird, which I didn't understand. Yesterday the cat walked calmly up the driveway with the Mockingbird alive in its mouth. Wings fanned, beautiful wings fanned and flopping, feathers parted like a woman's legs in sex, and the bird was no longer mocking, it was asking, it was praying. But the cat, striding down through the centuries, would not listen. I saw it crawl under a yellow car with the bird to bargain it to another place. Summer was over. Hot damn, Bukowski. Hot damn. Yeah, we have slightly different versions. Do we? Yeah, I don't okay. have legs in sex. Really? I have legs. Oh, see, uh, I've got a... That, this is Bukowski's typed version here. Yeah, I was wondering if maybe you put that in yourself. No. Nice. Nice. So this you've, has been edited. You've got some false Bukowski. No, it's not false Bukowski. This is the pleasures of the damned. This is uh, essential Bukowski, selected and edited. Hmm. But, I mean, come on, that's, that's Bukowski's signature. That's the original type print. And there's like even some lines that have been crossed out here, which I guess we'll have to talk about in a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> the Mockingbird. The Mockingbird had been following the cat all summer. Mocking, 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 teasing, and cocksure. The cat crawled under rockers on porches, tail flashing, and said something angry to the mockingbird which I did not understand. Yesterday, the cat walked calmly up the driveway with the mockingbird alive in its mouth. Wings fanned, beautiful wings fanned and flopping, feathers parted like a woman's legs, and the bird was no longer mocking. It was asking, it was praying. But the cat, striding down through the centuries, would not listen. I saw it crawl under a yellow car with the bird to bargain it to another place. Summer was over. Okay, that is interesting. I, I am not sure, to be honest. I would assume this would be the original, though. It's, I mean, it's hard to say, especially when a, when a piece gets submitted and edited yes. and resubmitted and well I want to put it in this collection but I want to make this change da, 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 da. Uh, this one here after the first little paragraph we have here um, and says something very angry to Mockingbird which I didn't understand uh, this text has the original crossed out from Bukowski of course the bird was protecting its nest I understood so that adds a little bit more to that as well but that was taken out so Different versions. It makes <clears throat> one interpret one possible interpretation of this poem a bit different as well. Okay. So, uh, three good things. Okay, a few good things on this here. Uh, this is quintessential Bukowski. This has a little bit of everything in it. it has the suffering, has the loneliness, has the women. Uh, the only thing we're missing is some cigarettes and some scotch. Uh, the ending line takes this from a decent poem to a better poem using only three words. It completely changes everything in that final line. Summer was over, uh, and finally. Uh, careful word choices with this really paint this piece. This makes it come alive, makes it pop. Uh, my three good things. One, this is a very simple scene. <clears throat> it is easy to get carried away in trying to build a scene when a simple scene will do. Okay. And with that word choice that's taken out there, that was really to make this a simpler scene. It does make it a lot simpler, so yes. So it is interesting to note that. Um, two, this is a good example of Bukowski, the observer. Okay. The person who's sitting back and observing, not the sort of confounded individual that we find in many of his poems. Okay. This is someone on the outside. And three, I like, uh, I like a lot of the individual word choices. This goes along with your third one. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, cocksure, flashing, fanning, striding, and bargain. Okay. Bargain it to a different place. <clears throat> three bad things. All right. Uh, Bukowski says what he damn well pleases, and every time we have Bukowski, we always say a few things, and th that scares some people off. This isn't your traditional poem that you would be uh, brought into. This isn't Robert Frost from high school. Uh, two, in its essence, this is again a poem about nothing. This is Bukowski sitting observing, and at its bare bones, this is just him looking at something that happened. 
Uh, and finally, I don't enjoy the opening. You said you really like that choice of the word cocksure. That opening sounds almost too rhythmic to sing song for me. It's not the Bukowski I want. Okay. Uh, my three bad things. One, I wonder if some of those word choices that do stand out do stand out because of the mundane nature of a lot of the other language here. Okay. Two, uh, give us some pronouns or nicknames, Bukowski. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear the mockingbird and the cat, the mockingbird and the cat, the mockingbird and the cat. Um, three, a little suspense may have served this poem well. We go from teasing Ann Cocksure to his right in the mouth. Uh, I think a little bit of drawing that out more, without making the scene that much more difficult, uh, would have possibly benefited the narrative. Okay. Where would you like to dive in with this? Uh, do you have a favorite line? Uh, honestly, I'm going to have to go with that final line because that final line changes this poem. Uh, summer was over. I think it's either that or mocking, 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 teasing, and cocksure. Okay. I really like the rhythm there. Okay, fair <laughs> Even enough. Even though it is coming from Bukowski. Where would you like to start with a literary analysis here? Uh, well, we could focus on that last line a little bit. I think that's a big, important part of this. We could talk about the, uh, let's talk about the choice to keep the bird alive in this. Because do we ever actually witness the bird dying? I think that's what bargain it to another place is referring to. You think to. so? Uh, I saw it crawl under a yellow car with the bird to bargain it to another place. Right. We never actually witnessed the bird dying. We just mm -hmm. witnessed the bird suffering. It's under the car and they're bargaining it to a different place. Fair, but I from think like that's the death scene. The Bukowski standpoint, the visual aspect of this, we're getting the suffering of the bird. Okay. Uh, I think that is a point of Bukowski. Bukowski is all about suffering. To bargain it, not and bargaining it. Okay. okay. Uh, Bukowski is all about suffering, and I think that really couples into the beauty of this piece is, uh, I mean, the typical line, uh, beauty is suffering, something along those lines, to love is to suffer. Okay. That, that... Um, it, it's interesting to couple those two things. Bukowski was one to always have to have some kind of pain in his piece, some kind of suffering. And even in this very simple scene, we get that whether we realize it or not. Uh, it, it, it really highlights that need that Bukowski has to have that suffering. And coupled along with the innocence of the Mockingbird, uh, it really adds a lot to that piece, in my opinion. So you wanted to start with that final line. What is the final line? Summer was over. If summer's over, where are we? If summer's over, we're moving into the fall. What's the fall? The death of everything. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I think along those lines, we have to give some thought to the interpretation of this poem as, uh, in pop culture today, haters gonna hate. Haters gonna hate. But nature's gonna nature. <laughs> That's not a Ric Flair reference. Um, what is a mockingbird going to do but mock? True. We get a lot about. That mockingbird shouldn't have been mocking. Okay. What's a mockingbird supposed to do but mock? You also get the feeling here that cat, mm, does he have to take it into there alive? Shouldn't he kill it quick? Shouldn't he have mercy? You would assume. Cat's going to hunt. Okay. Hater's going to hate. Cat's going to hunt. Mockingbird's going to mock. Okay. Uh, so with it being fall now, it is time for death. And all of these things are happening in the natural circumstance. They're happening in the natural way. They're okay. happening in the natural order. Um, but I wonder, oh, and, and one small thing about that, this, this line that sticks out, striding down through the centuries, what does that mean? I'm not sure. These Tell have all me. evolved to be this way. Okay. Striding down through the centuries. The cat's doing the only thing the cat knows to do because its father knew it. Because its father, father knew it. That's what cats do. Uh, and cats are always masculine in Bukowski. Yes. Um, like, they might not always be male. They're always masculine. Yes. So there's something to be said about that. Is this poem an extended sex metaphor? Uh, that's one of my points that I've got here. If we are looking at this from the summer transitioning into the fall... We are looking at the innocence and simplicity of summer, which is always coupled with, you know, young summer love, uh, simplicity, uh, that, that wonderful, you freedom. know, freedom, uh, falling into the decay of fall, the death of the mockingbird, a mockingbird, which is a very innocent creature, uh, which is usually if seen as... mockingbird don't sing. Uh-huh. Uh, if we're coupling those together, the innocence is lost. Uh, the bird dies. The summer moves into the fall. 
we're really getting a bit of a sexual reference here, <clears throat> especially when you co- excuse me. <clears throat> what are you Woo! trying to do? I'm trying to get my man voice on for this. I'm trying to die. I especially when you look at the cat as a masculine figure taking the innocence of the mockingbird from the summer into the fall. There's a lot going on with that there. Well, we've also got what is this cat doing? This cat is hunting. This would not be the first time. <coughs> this would not be the first time that a hunting metaphor is used for finding a mate. True. Right. Very true. Um, <clears throat> there, there's something. He said something angry to the mockingbird, which I did not understand. Is the word "fuck" very angry? It is. Is the word "fuck" very sexual? It is. Well, there's there's a double entendre going on there. Um, Tail flashing. I don't think I don't think you really have to stretch to, to see that. Uh, feathers parted like a woman's legs. Praying. Oh God. Yep. How often is that um, stereotyped as something that someone says during sex? Very true. Oh God. Oh my God. Things yeah. like that. I, I think it's interesting. Again, if we can just comment on this, is like yours says feathers parted like a woman's legs. Mine says feathers parted like a woman's legs in sex. Right. Either way, you're getting that sexual ideology. Right. You're getting that, but like when you add that, like that in sex, that forces you to think about that. This is all of a sudden a very sexual piece, as opposed to more of a subtle uh, sexuality. Well, directly implicated yes. versus pointed at. Yes. Um, but a small thing there also. The yellow car. Yellow car's a flashy car. Okay. Chicks dig the car, right? How often do you hear that? Fair so enough. we're 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 hunting this chick and we're taking her back to the car. Okay. Where's a lot of summer loving happen? Happens in the car. <laughs> yeah. Um so I th- I think there's a lot to be made there. Um, and I don't, I don't really think that it is a stretch to be made. No, I, I think that would be the point of this. And if we follow Bukowski's canon that would fit alongside something that he would normally write, absolutely. Um, And that's really, it's that line, summer was over, for me. That's what really transcends this piece, because like you said, you have the transition from summer into fall. That puts the whole thing into perspective. That's the loss of innocence, the changing of the seasons. Uh, That's what makes this good, as opposed to just decent. Well, and there's also, on a reading level, there is a line in each of these stanzas that stands out. Okay. Starting at the end, its own stanza, summer was over. Right before that, to bargain it to another place. Okay. I've never read that before. To Fair. bargain it to another place. Striding down through the centuries. Never read that before. Uh, and the one, this is where I'm tripped up a little bit. And said something angry to the mockingbird in that first stanza. Okay. I've never heard that before. It's not, an, it's not an inventive use of language, but I've definitely never heard said something angry to the Mockingbird. Okay. Uh, again, we have a slight difference, and mine is said something very angry to the Mockingbird. I don't think that really changes much to it, but it does change yeah. the flow a little bit. Very needs to be struck out. There. Yes, yes, I agree with that. Um, you are right there. That, that does seem a, a little strange, given this. I'm trying now off the top of my head to mull together what would... Why that would work? Why what would work? I'm, I'm not sure what you're why, saying. Why does the cat say something very angry to the mockingbird? Oh, I mean, he, he's just it, doing what cats do, right? And so that's one of the, the parts where that is one of the parts where the beginning, the, the the lines that I have that my poem has omitted, but you have some view into mm-hmm. that mockingbird is protecting its nest. Yes. That gives us a little more sense of that mockingbird isn't just mocking the cat. He's probably attacking it. You're defending. Right? Um, he's not sitting up on the uh, on the porch just squawking. Mm-hmm. He's probably dive bombing, right? Um, I, I think when you take out the nest part, though, that really adds, it highlights the innocence of this piece, where it is like a, an innocent summer love. Because if you add the nest, then this is a mature mockingbird. Right. If you add the nest, this is a single mother. This is a mother with a husband that kind of wants something on the side. It changes the piece completely. I cannot make out the word, but I know you really like the line, mocking, 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 teasing, and cocksure. Originally, apparently, there was another line, teasing something in cocksure, and I can't quite make it out there. 
Uh, it's been printed with the black line through it. Avaricious? Is that what it is? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that would... So that would go along with defense. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, I think that changes the mood then, if that's what we're striking out. And I could like it better with this loss of innocence bit to it here. Sure, I do um, too. I, I don't like the idea. I, it, it, the mature mockingbird guarding the nest, this is just a scene. The young, innocent mockingbird being taken by the cat, that's the poetry. There's more to it. I like that. More to it with less. Yes, which is interesting. Um, and I, I, One thing that, that stands out to me about this cat, we don't get the inference that he's very tough. Okay. We don't get the inference that he's very rugged. Just a cat. Just a cat. Just a random cat. Any cat you want. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times with Bukowski, it is not that way. A lot of times with Bukowski, you get that it's a, it's a tom cat. Uh, it's a rough cat. This cat uh, looks rough, but he's real sweet. You know, something like that. And see, I even put in here, and like this is just Bukowski, you know, slipping that into your mind. Uh, the Innocence of the Mockingbird, the sexual reference coupled with the male tabby cat. He's not a male tabby cat, he's a cat. Yeah. Uh, but you infer that. You immediately infer that when you read this piece, that that is what's going on here. Uh, and without that, it, it does get kind of bland. So I think it is supposed to be there. Absolutely. What is supposed to be there? Uh, that, in fact, that it is a male cat attacking the innocent mockingbird. Is there? Would there be something <laughs> to be gained if the mockingbird was masculine and the cat was feminine or if they were both feminine both masculine um i think if you were to flip do you have so, like a gender so reversal here i think that this is one of the times where g- the difference between gender and sexuality is necessary to observe okay cats in bukowski are masculine they are not necessarily male this cat need not be male to, be to have the masculine ideals with which it is imbued by Bukowski's literature. Okay. And we don't even have to... So if, if you were not familiar with the greater canon of Bukowski, would this poem mean as much to you? Uh, I, I would say it would, because there are little lines that give you that. And like I said, uh, feathers parted like a woman's legs in sex. That, that's very Bukowski. When it's struck out there, it does change the piece. But you still get that uh, subtle sexuality that is Bukowski. I, I think it reads just as well being your first Bukowski as it is reading into the canon of Bukowski. You think? I really do. I think this is something that definitely being familiar with Bukowski, it's helped by that. It benefits it, absolutely. Um, as this was not one of my first Bukowskis, nor was it early in my experience with Bukowski, I am not sure I can speak for an alternative viewpoint okay uh, do you have anything else you want to touch on with this i i don't uh okay. for me this was a fairly straightforward read um, i would agree very good read i think but straightforward uh and i couldn't even i, I tried to sit down and sort of uh bargain something else out of it but but i couldn't those those readings that i had you know nature's going to be nature uh evolution striding through the centuries uh, extended metaphor for sex, things like that. That's that's all I could really get out of this. I wasn't yep. sure I could go anywhere else with it. That's what I drew from it. What would you rate this particular piece by Bukowski? I would give this 85 Mockingbirds out of 100. 85? I gave it 88 Parted Feathers. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. We're getting frighteningly close to each other with these ratings. Eventually, lately. we're just going to keep them. Maybe like, we're going to give it this. One You'll give rating. the rating, I'll give the recommendation. Fair Something enough. like that. What would you recommend for this? Um, I try to stay away from from recommending a work by the same author, and I'm yep. afraid that you're going to do this to okay. Bluebird. I didn't. I, didn't I tried to make sure I didn't, because I always am like, if you like Bukowski, read fucking Bukowski. Uh, the Bluebird is gorgeous, by the way. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, if you want to read about sexy birds, Keats, Ode to a Nightingale. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Thank you. I stretched a little bit for that This one. time, I was the one who went with the same author, and... and uh, Dalton made an actual literary reference. I made so. a literary reference and used sexy birds in the same sentence. Isn't go. that impressive? Yeah. Anyway, that's some Bukowski. We're going to have to do some more. I can't get enough. If you like this sort of thing, we are looking forward to bringing more poetry to BookTube. We would appreciate a like if you did, in fact, like this. Um, subscribe if you have not. And if you would like to help us make more content, there's a link, as always, to our Patreon to be found in the description below.